Until the early 1930s, the Jewish population of Palestine remained under 17%. Hitler's rise to power in Germany completely changed that. In just five years, 174,000 Jews flooded into Palestine, doubling their population. As the world attempted to make amends for the horrors of Nazi genocidal policies, Efforts to make Palestine a Jewish homeland increased. The Palestinians, they were not the Nazis. They were not responsible for the Holocaust. But they were the ones who paid the price. In 1947, with the conflict spiraling out of control, Britain decided to turn the problem of Palestine over to the United Nations. The UN, under pressure, proposed to divide the land into two states an Arab state and a Jewish state. Arabs were to be given 43% of the land, despite the fact that they made up more than two-thirds of the population and owned over 92% of the land. Jews were to be given 56%, although they comprised only one-third of the population and owned less than 8% of the total area. Nevertheless, they were given not only most of the land, they were given the most fertile land. Zionist leaders took advantage of their superior military preparation and immediately began occupying major Arab cities in Palestine. I was among the people that conquered Akko. When we were walking around, we entered the flat. There was a pair of shoes of a small child, maybe two years old. They didn't have time to put on the shoes, so they left the shoes and they ran away. They left everything. We found out that there was a systematic expulsion of Palestinians, and there was, as I said, there was an ethnic cleansing operation taking place. The most infamous campaign was the massacre at the village of Deir Yassin, where over 100 men, women, and children were systematically murdered. the ruthlessness of the attack on Deir Yassin drove fear and panic into the Palestinian population and led to the flight of unarmed civilians from their homes all over the country. As a result, maybe 300 or so thousand Palestinians had already been expelled before the first Arab soldier entered Palestine. Some of the neighboring Arab armies finally intervened after May 15, 1948, when Israel officially announced its statehood. Although there was a lot of war rhetoric on the Arab side, very few soldiers, Arab soldiers, were sent into the battlefield. And actually, for most parts of the war, there was a superiority on the side of the Israeli army. The Israeli army cleansed much of the territory and took over a large part of the designated Palestinian state. 
The new state of Israel encompassed 78% of the total land of Palestine. The West Bank came under Jordanian control and the Gaza Strip under Egyptian dominion. Although a truce was declared between Israel and the Arab states, true peace remained elusive as over 700,000 Palestinian refugees languished in nearby camps, often in sight of homes to which they still held the deeds and a deep desire to return. Most of the deserted and evicted Palestinian uh, villages were erased from upon the earth and were either turned into Jewish settlements or into uh, fertile uh, land. Of the 500 Palestinian villages in what became in Israel in 1948, 400 were destroyed. These efforts to destroy the possibility of their returning home were countered by the United Nations, which continues to affirm their human right enshrined in international law and morality to return. A Palestinian who had lost her land or lost his land uh, as the result of the, the creation of Israel in 1948 cannot come back even for a visit. I can go back to Israel as if I were returning and claim immediate citizenship having no historic tie, speaking no Hebrew, knowing no one in the country, having no family who ever was there. All that one needs is being Jewish, a religious group like any other. The events of 1948 were a defining moment for the Middle East and from that point onward created instability throughout the region. Violent tensions continued and led to another war in 1967. In that war, Israel occupied the remainder of historic Palestine, what is known today as the West Bank and Gaza. Another myth was that Israel was about to be pushed into the sea, but I was working in the State Department at that time. There was no question of Israel being pushed into the sea. The question was just the rapidity and the totalness of the Israeli victory, and the victory was, was crushing. During the 1967 war, Israel displaced more than 400,000 Palestinians, half of whom were 1948 refugees, displaced for a second time in less than two decades. It became clear that the world was not going to address their plight. Palestinians in Israel lived as third-class citizens of a state whose core identity excluded them, while those in the newly occupied territories and abroad continued as dispossessed refugees. The United Nations passed resolution after resolution affirming their rights. Leaders of surrounding Arab nations verbally championed their cause, but failed to take action. Finally, Palestinians took matters into their own hands. There was a mass uprising, in Arabic and intifada shaking off, as people throughout the West Bank and Gaza Strip rebelled. The Israeli government adopted a strategy, in the words of Defense Minister Itzhak Rabin, of might, power, and beatings, which became known as the Break the Bones strategy. 